um, David, Suleiman, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, the Prophet Muhammad. We believe these are all mighty messengers chosen by God who came with the same conceived message, which is there's one God, worship him alone. Yeah. Um, and the final message of the Prophet Muhammad, he had the Quran was revealed to him. And as he's the final messenger, there's no more messengers to come, there's no more prophets. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Do you like a leaflet, bro? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, as there's no more messages to come, um, God preserved the final message, the final revelation, the Quran, for all of eternity. Quran is the only religious scripture that claims to be from God, um, that claims, um, and God takes the responsibility of actually preserving it. Yeah. How do you feel about what I've said so far? Sounds interesting? It's interesting to know what others are doing. Yeah, but do, do you find that I've said anything that's a bit strange or unusual or anything contrary to what should be believed? Because like, do, do you have in Hinduism, is there a concept of prophets and messengers? I'm not that educated in my religion. Okay. Do, do you know where Hinduism comes from, by the way? The, what the word Hinduism means? I'm really not educated in my religion. No, that's fine. Hinduism is a geographical term. Yeah. Muslim means someone who submits to God. Yeah. Um, have you ever listened to Dr. Zakir Naik? No. No, oh. um, no sorry. I haven't listened to him. Okay. Yeah. You seem I'm like you seem I'm worried. Like, I'm just I'm having a conversation. Worried, just, I can't have that conversation with you because I'm really not like educated. Or no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not going to challenge just, you on that. Um, it's just Dr. Zakir Naik. Sorry. Um, he's from India and it. He's done a lot of conversations and debates in regards to like comparative religion, and um, one because I'm going to reference my knowledge on Hinduism based on what he said, and he references the Bhagavad Gita and the, um, the scriptures that Hindus follow. Does it make sense? And um, what Dr. Zakanak says, and which is the Quranic narrative, is um, come to common terms between us and them. Yeah? Now come to common terms between us and them as in like what do people what do we agree on yeah and even in hinduism there's a concept of one god yeah um, did, you, did you know that that there's a belief that there's the almighty one, one god essence. yeah 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 um, and again that's coming back to what islam believes there's one god um, so yeah i i find it interesting um, what you said you're looking into religion obviously your identity is to describe yourself as a hindu um what is it that makes you curious about other religions um, and again um, no pressure to come back i'm just asking you an innocent question um i'm just curious about everything it doesn't really specifically need to be religion about how people work and cultures and okay about um would you say like are you someone who's trying to connect with god or would you say you're connected to god you have a cheeky smile on your face i don't know what that means um, i need i need subtitles what does it mean well it means that well i i do want to connect with god um i do go to temple um but well, you're very like I know you're not trying to convert me to Islam, but like the, your language, the language that you're using is quite persuasive. Like the questions that you're asking. Um, sh sh shall I tell you why? Because um, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Because don't be scared. It's just information yeah. you need. In no, no. Because I'm not. At the end, of the day, I'm not converting you to Islam. This, that's not the purpose of the conversation. I think what happens is we get caught up in titles. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian. Like, what do these titles mean? We've never asked. It's just, that's become my identity. Why? Does it make sense? Um, like, this is a religion. No, it's fine. Um, this is a religion, um, but what, what does it have? It's a religion, okay. Is it from God? How do I verify it's from God? Because right now, innately, it's natural for you, for me, for all the creation of God to want to connect to God mm. yeah because God has innately created us with the belief that there's one God yeah you could find people 
who don't even speak a language yeah uncivilized people so to speak here yeah? but they have a concept of one god they're worshiping one god yeah you know there's no atheist on a sinking ship atheism is not natural yeah it's natural to believe in god now through our conversation i know you believe in god yeah um, and that's natural you want to connect with god so my natural progression to that is how are you going to connect with god how are you connecting with god are you prioritizing that does that make sense yeah it was i'm not prioritizing it but i make sense yeah why not because we live in a society that's indoctrinating you and me because i was born and brought up in this country that no it's not important follow your desires um spend money be consumer driven why so makes money are you making money by buying expensive stuff yeah does that make sense you're probably a very good example we would you respect right because if i had this problem i know that i'm going to be sexist now women have this problem right there's plenty of stuff which i've bought been used this is my brother's time huh? and he doesn't use it yeah. it's my brother's but i'm using it you're using it yeah do you have stuff you haven't even Oh, buying it is going to make us happy, but it doesn't. So, what's going to make you happy? What's going to help you to connect with God? What's going to help me connect with God? Yeah. What are you doing to connect with God? Personally, yeah, yeah, you. Um, when I go to temple, mm. um, I see the statue of Amman, the um, poet in front of me. Um, whenever I pray and close my eyes, it's before when I was younger, I used to ask, like, I used to ask for things. But now as I grow up, I'm just saying, um, God, I trust that you'll be with me. Um, and then when I think of it like that, now everything that happens to me, um, I view it as God is doing that instead of. Instead of asking, it's like, God, will you be with me while I do this? Um, if it's good for me, um, then please, please be with me while I do it. If it's not good for me, then lead me to the right way. Um, so, <coughs> you would go to the temple and you would pray to the statue? Um, I think seeing the statue in front of me helps me see her. Um, her? Yeah, it's a goddess. Okay. Um, I, not, I was holding that umbrella for too long, now he can hold it. La la, I'm good, I'm good, man. No worries, you can't speak. Uh, sorry. Um, also, I'm going to go through. I already have a cold, which is why I'm going to yeah. go through. Well, no, which no. Is, that's not why, but I'm mm. going to use that as an excuse to go through. <laughs> um, I respect your honesty. Um, no, no, that's fine. But I think seeing her um, there helps me to, like, it makes me feel a bit closer but i'm not saying that the statue itself is god mm. yeah. okay um oh um there was actually a recent example yeah. it's not an example but and it could just be belief and faith yeah. um but one of um the priests um he said something so we i've been it's, it's gonna get too Detailed, exactly. No, no, go detail, go deep. Because the thing is, right, one of the things I enjoy doing is comparative religion. I like to hear your subjective experience, your subjective kind of beliefs. Does that make sense? Mm. Um, like, yeah, I'm curious. I, I genuinely want to know. Because the thing is, I like to have a genuine conversation with somebody. Do I mean? I want to know your subjective experience of why you believe what you believe. But I'm very passionate about what I believe. Yeah. So, um, I'm very curious about why people believe what they believe. Does that make sense? And I'm more curious when it's different to what I believe. Because there's one thing I want to address before you leave. So just give me a few minutes before you leave. But you take as long as you want. I'm listening. Okay, so not about that, but in summary. Yeah. Um, I think that we all believe in God. But yes. there's like different versions that people have in mind. Yes. Um, the reason why I am going to look I'm curious about other people's religions and not necessarily everyone else's. Like I've only been curious in to Islam mostly. Why? Um, why? 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 It's mostly because that's the only um, that's one that's very 
not popular, but you see a lot of the um, you see a lot of the resources on that online. Um, it's not that I'm actually going out to look at it, but it's just on my feed and stuff. Um, but anyway, I do know that we not know. But I do think that we all believe in Hegel, but it's personal to us. Because I was born into a family, um, I'm going to look at, I'm curious about why I've been brought down an ancestry and heritage and line of people believing that, um, where that comes from and what our practices were. Um, I'm curious about that and that's why I want to stick, not stick with it, um, but I wouldn't change that because it's part, it is part of my identity and I do trust my ancestors. That you know you keep saying that you're not leaving Hinduism and I'm not even having that conversation with you. I know, why, why you... I'm just speaking out my thoughts. But why are you having these thoughts? It's because I am... Um, I question a lot of things like... I think it's helpful but then I question what... I it's it's helpful to question and it's better to understand because if you go down my bloodline, yeah, being a... Um, Parents being from Bangladesh, right? At a certain point, someone in my Andrus, um, ancestry was a Hindu. Does that make sense? Um, right now, um, I know many fire worshippers. Oh, is it? Subhanallah. So, Islam, like if you look amongst our table, amongst the group of brothers who are there, um, we have people born English white. Um, from Jamaica, from all different countries, Pakistan, um, Afghanistan, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so I think it doesn't necessitate, regardless of where you're born, what you're born into. That's why a lot of my questions to you seem quite profound and compelling, is because I'm just inviting you to think. And the natural... the your natural full process will take you to God, to the true, truth God, to the true God. Does it make sense? Now, I want to address something that you said in regards to God having gender. Oh, I didn't say it as a topic, but I did say goddess. Goddess. Yeah, yeah, no, because you, you said goddess. Um, and I think this is one of the interesting things in Islam. God. No, I'm just interested. Yeah? So in Islam, um, we don't have, like, Allah doesn't have a gender. Yeah, because um, th this is this is more. We can't compare the creator with the creation. Yeah, um, that's one of the reasons that I I like to use the word Allah. Yeah, because Allah, um, you can't make Allah have a gender. Yeah, you can't make Allah have a plural. Linguistically, it's not possible to say Allah or add an s. Yeah, you can't add an s to make. Um, a feminine version of Allah. Allah is free from gender, um, from plurality, from being more than one. And the, I'm going to give you the four line definition of God in the Quran, yeah? um, which you don't want to take, which I'm not going to make you take. Um, chapter 112, and there's four lines it says, Audhu Billahi Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Kul Hu Allah Hu Ahad. Say Allah is uniquely one. Allah Samad. His self-sustaining, eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Um, he did not beget, nor was he begotten. He wasn't born, nor does he have children. Walam lakullahu kufwanahad. There's nothing comparable to Allah. Does that make sense? So, how, how do you feel about this four-line definition of God? Don't, don't rush to answer it, Just take your time, whatever naturally comes to you. Because at the moment, like I said, we're in the conversation stage. I'm understanding what you believe, you're understanding what I believe. And just have a natural conversation, no pressure. <laughs> Speak from your heart. Self-sustaining, eternal. Oh, that's the third line. He, yeah, he was not born, nor was he begotten. He does, no, sorry. He does not beget, nor was he begotten. He wasn't born, nor does he have children. He was not. Yeah. So, Kulhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, 
لم يلد ولم يلد ولم لكل الله كفوا أحد. I mean, all I am thinking right now is nothing too deep. It's just that. Um, so what you're thinking right now is what? It's not so deep. Um, it's, it's just. Um, I just understand that. So God is uniquely one. Um, he's yeah. self-sustaining, eternal. He was not born. He does not. He was not born, nor does he beget. He was not begotten, nor was he. Uh, nor does it beget, uh, and there's nothing comparable to him. That's the four-line definition, loosely translated to the nearest meaning. So, how do you feel about my four-line definition of God? Does it contradict the God that you believe in? Oh, I will. Mm, um, mm, so I was comparing it to my God. Oh. Um, yeah. No, that's my question. Like, is it different to what you believe in? Is there anything that I've said to you? Which is different. Um, is there something that's like, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. You want to challenge me on? Uh, not necessarily. Yeah? Is there, does it contradict anything that you believe in as your God? Me personally, on my take on Yeah. I know I said God um, but it's nothing like it contradicts my I know that other people have their own views. So I'm not challenging it. You don't need to that's challenge it. What? The four-line definition of God I've given. Okay, you believe in God. You have a definition of God, of what you believe. The thing is, even like, if I can't have this conversation. Like, I because Why? It's, it's. I'm really, I'm getting confused about your hesitation. Like, where is no. the hesitation coming? It's just a friendly conversation. No, it's not because I don't want to have the conversation with you. I just have not. Articulated in my mind, what like what, then at I, least I sit on both sides, kind of, but I don't want to say that out loud. Yeah. Okay. As in, in religion versus not. So you you got one foot on the Muslim camp, one foot on the Hindu camp. Um, no, no, not that. Um, one foot on my religion, and then one foot on not. Like you said you don't want to say out loud. What do you mean by that? Oh no no no! I think you just said it. So I've just said it. Yeah. yeah. So right now, <coughs> so no religion or not a belief in God religion, uh, not belief in God. I don't really want to talk about that out loud. It's why? Because I think look, at the end of the day, I'm the best person to talk to. Do you know why? Because you're never gonna see me again. <laughs> That is true, but I... Does it make sense? There's, there's no judgmental... Um, the next time you're in Stratford, I'm, I'm going to be around there. Just walk past. <laughs> just walk around <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to notice. Does it make sense? I'll be like, wait, wait I recognise her. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's it. So, I think... So, I would say, before you make a judgement in regards to faith or belief in God or lack of belief in God, you definitely need to look into Islam. I don't believe in chance coincidence. Um, there's a f element of faith, faith, fate that we're having this conversation. Element that look, why do you keep seeing Islamic things on your feet? Yeah. I was gonna argue the society is biased towards Islam. It paints Islam in a bad light, negative light. But you're seeing positive things, which is a bit unusual. Does it make sense? So these things are from God. Yeah. And if there's one takeaway from this conversation is if there's one takeaway from this conversation is you need to truly reflect on your definition of God. Yeah. Where are you getting it from? Yeah. This why you know this brother, before I came, he was probably like, take the Quran, take it, it will help you. This is how confident we are that the Quran you're not going to find no contradictions in it, you're not going to disagree with it, it's going to change your life in a positive way. We, we're just giving it away for free. He's like, look, I don't know what to say to you, I don't know anything, just take this. Because that's that, his confidence comes from the perfection of the Qur'an. So if the Qur'an, um, for example, like if you research yourself, right, in a university in Birmingham, we have a carbon dated Quran in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. 1449 years old. Yeah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spoke Arabic. 
the Quran is in Arabic. We have millions of people, Arabs and non-Arabs, who have memorized the Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. Does it make sense? So when I give a definition of God, or when I say this is what I believe, why I believe, I have good reason for it. Does it make sense? Um, the Quran talks about science, gets it right. The Quran talks about history, gets it right. The Quran makes prophecies, gets it right. Yeah? If there's any mistakes in the Quran, leave Islam. It's fake, it's false, it's not from God. Allah is perfect, Allah's scripture is perfect. Does it make sense? And um, not only that, it's been perfectly preserved. So you can go home, do your own independent research. I don't want to embrace Islam. You don't need to research to embrace Islam. I don't want to convert. You don't need to research to, to embrace, um, convert to Islam. You can just research to see if I'm, what I'm saying is right. Does that make sense? You can just research it because the thing is, who's your loyalty to? Your loyalty, my loyalty, his loyalty should be to the one true creator. And that one true creator is communicating to us through a perfect scripture. Does it make sense? Uh, uh, if Islam was the truth and what you're saying is true and the Quran is perfect, why doesn't everyone become Muslim? People don't have time. People are spending time doing other things. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Research that yourself. Um, fastest growing religion in America, in Europe. More women are embracing Islam in Europe. Does that make sense? So Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. But for people who are conscious to be curious, people who are proactive, people who are not gonna feed into the lies. Does it make sense? Like in this country, you go to work. Yeah. You're not allowed to talk about God. You're not allowed to talk about death. You're not talking allowed to talk about religion. Why? You know, it's not it's not good. But then, oh, it causes conflict. People have conflict when they talk about football. Why aren't you banned talking about football? I've seen more conflict over that. So it's like, no, there's a certain amount of indoctrination taking place where the important topics. Does that make sense? When's the last time you talk about death? She never. Does it make sense? Yeah. No, no, no. Everyone talking about enjoyment. Nike, just do it. You only live once. YOLO. Why are we having those conversations? Does that make sense? My point is, look, um, <coughs> life is too short to be Netflix and chill. To be oh, like animal. Um, I can imagine you're quite learned, right? What have you studied? Um, Biochemistry, math. Biochemistry. I not say you're learned, yeah. How much time have you invested in that? Quite a lot. Huh? Quite a lot. Quite a lot. Yeah. How much spare time? How many books have you read on this topic? But you don't have time to connect with God's scripture. Even even your own scripture. Read read your Bhagavad Gita. Read your Deda Deda. Yeah. You don't need to. You, someone who describes herself as a Hindu, you don't know a lot about it. But through your own admission, you did say that you're still on a journey. Yeah. Um, so my point is, look, if, yeah. Um, it's not that I don't know a lot about Hinduism. I've heard about things here and there, but because I haven't gone out to practically research it, I can't say it out. I can't, I don't have that skill to articulate it out loud. No, you don't need to, but my point is, as long as you're making an informed decision to believe what you believe. Does that make sense? Um, and what I'm doing, rather than saying become a Muslim, embrace Islam, I'm saying, look, use the cr critical thinking, yeah? Use your brain, God-given brain, to actually um, establish there's a creator. There's too much design for there not to be a designer, yeah? If I was to, um, you know Muslims, we enjoy blowing up stuff, right? It's a joke. If I was to blow up a tree, you're not going to get a wooden table and chair, are you? You're not going to get a table and chair out of it. If I um, blow up a glass panel, yeah, you're not going to get like a cup and a 
jog and so on and so forth. Or, uh, you know what I mean? So when there's a big bang, why is there so much design? Not only is the design, um, it's perfectly designed to sustain life. Does that make sense? It's not too close to the sun. Um, the shape of the world is great in seasons. Even the Quran talks about this. Does that make sense? Um, the Quran talks about stuff that the Quran, there's no way for someone to know this 1400 years ago. Does that make sense? It's talking about um, the moon having reflected light. Yeah? Um, it's talking about the shape of the world. Yeah? Um, when people thought it was. Let me take over, my bro. No, no, bro. I have yeah. a new video. I'm really yeah. sorry to watch yeah. you, but um, no, no. I'm going to go. Yeah. But before you go, do you have any questions? Anything that you always thought like? Shatri said, I wonder why Muslims do that. I wonder why Muslims practice that. Why do they teach this? Any questions? You can't offend me. I won't think you're being rude. In fact, I would be more happy if it was an offensive question. Challenge me. Let's see what you've got. Just have curiosity. And if you feel really uncomfortable, just say, Oh, my friend asked me to ask. <laughs> my friend asked this question, and I was curious if you can answer it. How about you want to phrase it? So, does your friend have any question that they may have asked you a while back? Oh, my favorite one is, I know somebody. That somebody's me. I know somebody. And I respect your time, by the way. I appreciate any questions. It's gone. Um, I don't have any questions to clear doubt. I just have questions because I'm curious. So, for example, um, why do you pray five times a day, I think? And, um, like, more specific habits like that, these are things I'm curious about. Most of them, I want to learn about the essence of that so then I can then apply it to my religion. You want to learn the what of that, sorry? Like, the, the, the reasoning behind that. Not the reasoning, but... I think it's like a practice that I can then take but pray to my God. Um, first and foremost is because Allah said so, right? It's a commandment from God. Um, the benefit of that is it helps us to connect with God. Yeah, Allah says in the Quran that it uh, protects you from committing fasha, which is shamelessness. So it protects you from being bad and sinful people. Um, the example I give is me robbing a bank. Yeah, or me committing adultery or whatever. Yeah, when am I gonna commit it? Okay, I just done my morning prayer. Yeah, I'll commit in the afternoon. Oh, now I got afternoon prayer to do. I do it after that, but then I got another prayer. Does that make sense? Then I got the prayer, the night, the evening prayer. Then I've got the night prayer. Then I'm doing it all over again. Does that make sense? So it's that daily reminder. I've had people in my living room become Muslim. Right? When I told him we have to pray five times a day. Yeah? Um, he was a Christian, he goes, that's exactly what I need. Praying um, once a week is not enough. So it's food for the soul. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah, it's a commandment from God and it's, a, it's, it's the second pillar of Islam. So the first pillar is the belief in Allah. Yeah. Um, we call it the Shahada, which is um, Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasulu which translates into um, I bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship apart from except Allah yeah, no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Allah has um, sent Muhammad as the uh, messenger of God is the messenger of God yeah um, then is what you mentioned the second one which is praying five times a day then it's a annual charity zakat where you give 2.5% of your wealth that you haven't spent in one calendar year. It's your savings and you only give 2.5% of that and as Muslims we eradicated poverty. Sorry. There was no more poor people due to the fact that we implemented the law of God of giving zakat. Then it's fasting um, in the month of Ramadan. Yeah, just rotate a little bit. Sorry. So that means, yeah, yeah, that, that, let, me, let me take it to my head, bro. That's four, five, it's three. <laughs> um, and then the holy program of Hajj. Yeah. So, all, one of the beautiful things in Islam is, right, 
there's nothing Allah has forbidden which is good people. And there's nothing which is good, um, bad, for you. bad for you that's been forbid uh, that's, that's permissible. Does that make sense? So just to clarify, everything which has been forbidden is bad for you. Yeah? And everything which is permissible is good for you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, there might be some short-term benefit enjoyment I get. Yeah? But long-term is going to destroy me, make me unhappy, break homes, break down society. Yeah? I mentioned the Quran too. Yeah? Well, give you a reference. And it doesn't make sense. So the beautiful thing in Islam is um, everything which is forbidden is mentioned. Yeah? So we don't do it. And everything else is permissible. <laughs> make sense? It's permissible. So whatever, because the list, if Allah listed everything that we can't do, yeah, it's a shorter list of then things, everything we can do. So in the Quran, if there was a list of everything we can do, the list would be so long. The Quran would be so long. Because there's a shorter list of um, restrictions of things we can't do, it's been listed. Does it make sense? You can't eat the flesh of swine, you can't drink blood, you can't. Ex does that make sense? It's a very short list. But then everything else is permissible. Have your mango juice, your apple juice, have your water, your no milk. No wishes, that, brother. Wallah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I hope that's answered your question. Anything else you was wondering about? Um, With your curious mind? Um, nothing right now. I want to think. Yeah. Um, I sincerely appreciate your time. I uh, thank you for your time. Um, and I hope I haven't said anything to offend you. Um, if you do have any questions, write it down. I'm here every Saturdays. Um, and I think, yeah, it would be good for us to revisit this conversation, have a genuine conversation in regards to um, once you've had time to digest what we spoke about and see where your progression is and what direction you're going, what the game plan is, how you're going to get there. And in 30 seconds, I think the main thing is for us to reconnect with the creator in the way the creator wants us to rather than man-made ways or way I think is good because God knows what's best for us God communicated to us let's follow what God wants that's my final thoughts thank you so much you. take care thank you for your patience you still want the book or do you no. want to do your research no I don't want the book no worries yeah? no you have thank a great you. day thank you for your time